Hello everyone, welcome to the Trivium Method, as presented by yours truly. This is a full course in the Trivium Method. And I discovered the Trivium Method a couple of years ago and started to delve more into it through a wide variety of different sources and found that it's very useful, it's very interesting, and I think that it's a real missing element in the general education of the public at large and especially the catastrophically failing school system. So this is the Trivium Method as presented by me, Thomas Halifax. So this is the outline for the course in this introduction. I'll go through what the method is, why it matters, and how it builds the process of thought. In part one, we're going to cover the gathering of information and the navigating of thought. In part two, we'll cover logic, filtering information, drawing conclusions. In part three of rhetoric, we'll be covering making use of information and using and misusing arguments. We'll cover both of those in brief. So the intention for this course, this course is intended to provide an overview of the basic functions of thought and the tools for understanding and navigating thought. The trivia method as a process will be explained. Aspects of grammar, logic, and rhetoric that we just covered will be covered at a general and practical level. I'm not going to go super, super deep into any of this because you can find all of the resources at the end of the course. The goal of the course is to form a foundation for discovery of more about the method, and I'll give you all the tools that I use to build this course. So it's a tool set that can be used to approach any topic of interest, which is what the Trivium was laid out for. I've heard it called the original self-help book. So the Trivium is a body of learning that was perfected in the medieval period, but whose roots go back much further into the classic Roman and Greek world and perhaps earlier. At its core, it deals with language and the various ways we humans use it to communicate, reason, and persuade. This quote is from one of the book resources that I've used, Trivium Books, created by the publishers at Wooden Books and Bloomsbury Publishing. And this quote is from John Mitchell. The diagram to the side here shows the trivia method in its breakdown of what its components are and what some of their equivalent parts are. So we'll just run through this quickly. The grammar phase is the knowledge or the input part where you're gathering up information and putting it into application after doing the processing phase, which is the logic component that leads to the understanding of what's being taken in. So that is where you're processing that information. The rhetoric element kind of has some connotations to it that people are encouraged very well to digress away from is simply wisdom and output, which is just properly using what you've taken in and understand, and the rhetoric component can be used deceptively, and we'll cover that later on. So, the Trivium sets out a formula that can be applied to any topic and guides the mind to clear understanding. So, going back into another diagram on the Trivium, it's just a set of processes or a set of steps that you can use that move through certain questions to develop understanding of any topic and you can use this absolutely anywhere so first of course is the input phase gathering up a whole wide range of resources and information addressing who what when and where just gathering the raw data without prejudging it or filtering it because the filtering step comes after which is in the processing phase of logic using filtration, correlation, analysis, and a large use of 
another aspect of the seven tools of the liberal arts, the quadrivium, which won't be covered in this, but it addresses the question of why. So it gets down to the meaning behind all of the data that you've collected, then there's the application towards the end, which is your speech action based on the knowledge that you've gathered and that you understand. I use the trivium a lot, really interestingly, and not surprisingly in developing this course. So this is the how, how you go about doing the thing that you're interested in doing and using all of the first two steps you're gathering and reasoning to put that into action so that way you have something that can be useful to you. So next, we're going to start with everything because the trivium starts with everything. The vast phenomenon of nature and the enormous volumes of knowledge collected throughout history is the beginning of the method, the input phase. From this, the basics are applied to explore and develop an understanding of our unlimited world. So, the trivium ultimately is the process of how our reality is built, what our available knowledge is, or the lack thereof, the processes behind understanding that knowledge, build into the actions that we take in the world, and this generates our manifested reality. And the, this slide is the main slide that we're going to be working off of and building this out as we move along. So there is a limited range of experience that we have access to. The interaction of our perception with this range of, no this range of knowable things defines our reality. The trivium is an essential process by which we are able to navigate the knowable world around us. So, this is our navigation tool set. The things that we're capable of having and understanding within our limited range of perception, we can understand these things. And this isn't a complete list, but I just wanted to put it down here because I think it's a very useful list. So words, obviously. You wouldn't be hearing this or understanding it without words. Numbers that define things like space and time, dimensions, and quantities of things, as well as the behavioral patterns of certain things. Forms and symbols, like the forms and symbols that are used for making the images that include words and numbers. Then there's also color and motion and a whole wide range of other things that fall into our range of perceivable comprehensions of the stuff that we have in our reality that we are able to interact with. So that's our navigation tool set. So I'm making a bit of a digression in this to just cover the landscape of the mind a little bit to um, kind of get this to a point of like this is this is our consciousness this is what we're doing this is what we're interacting with when we're moving through whether it's the trivium or just through daily life which you can apply the trivium to so beginning at our nervous system we have the interactions with the natural world happening at the level of sensation just the input output signals that come into our nervous system so they're totally automatic. There's no actual thought involved in it at all. And that's just our base level of experience. You'd say that this is linked to our fight or flight response, which is more of a perceptual quality because it implies that we have an understanding of ourselves in order to respond. So moving on to perception, it's our personal Hang on, I'm going to just read this here. Perception is more personal and activates the faculty of memory. So what we understand as being a part of us and what is not, like sensation, it is automatic. Our memories form automatically through, usually through the amygdala response, um, built 
from contrast among signals. If there's no contrast in the signals, then there's no sensation and you don't know that something is there. Hence the picture. So this specialization gifts us with five, five senses from which we build our world, how we understand it. The next is conception. Once all of this stuff has been taken in, it's the essential, the essence of unique human quality of imagination. The deliberate generation and construction of new ideas, born from the mixing of memory and the formation of generalizations. The options of creativity are unlimited. We're taking in all of the information, forming it through memory, and then reforming it, combining it, changing it, adapting it, and this is where we get imagination from. Without the input, there can't be any processing, and therefore no imagination. So the faculties of consciousness in general fall into the two categories that people are most familiar with, and so I'm going to cover these just very briefly for this small segment here. The analytical and the creative. So we have a very narrow focused range of our mind that goes down into deep details. It's literal and sequential and that faculty is great for doing really precise things like sequentially running through a slideshow like what I'm doing here. Then there's the more abstract components that are more like it says figurative, conceptual, more intuitive and those are important as well, especially for the creative faculties that our minds have. And synthesizing these two in the middle, we get the Seal of Solomon depicted here in green as a symbol of a holistic, balanced brain that can function on both of these parameters and utilize all of the faculties together for the act of creation instead of being super, super out there or super, super narrow in your focus and scope, you combine the two to get a more holistic, creative faculty happening and have the willpower to put it into action and make it something that makes sense and not just a bunch of random gibberish. So that is essentially that. So that leads us on to what actually makes us what we are. So what we are from the previous slides forming this this landscape of the mind is that we respond to our environment and have a nervous system with a conceptual thinking brain. We can do that process of taking stuff in, reforming it, coming up with creative ideas, and have pattern recognition skill and understanding meaning like symbols, like the symbols that are displayed on the screen. So then we are able to integrate just pure logic but also have a compassionate understanding and empathetic recognition of all of the others that are in our environment and recognize the difference between us and other things around us but also other people around us and integrating those two components are a part of having a holistic balanced brain. So the development of analysis as well as creativity feeds into that really well. So we can use symbol, tool, and proportion. These are three tools of, well the tool component is um, like more in reference to physical tools, but symbol and proportion are some of the tools, mental tools, that are used for helping us develop physical tools. So that's my version of a human checklist of what makes humans human. So in this introduction we're going to go through what the what each of the parts of this are going to be. In order we have grammar. So in grammar we will cover the process of collection the first part of the trivium is gathering raw data, knowledge about the world from a large range of sources, to form a base of who, what, when, and where, the foundational components of grammar. 
Also, we will look at the fundamentals of language as it relates to our ability to navigate our world, both the world around us and the inner world of ourselves, of the mind rest on a foundation of words, which again are symbols. Finally, we will briefly cover some stumbling blocks that may get in the way of understanding, which we'll do more of that in the logic portion. So on the side here we just have kind of the bullet points of all of that. I'll just leave that there for just a minute. So in logic we'll cover the process of reasoning. This part of the trivium is a filtration process used to reach sound conclusions determining the truthfulness of statements and arguments. Also we'll look at the structure of order within the formation of an argument, types of arguments that can be formed, and the classical tools used to remember and use such forms. Finally, we'll see some of the ways in which logic can go wrong, as well as the ways it can be misused. So we'll cover logical fallacy a little bit. Then after the logic phase, this course will cover rhetoric. So in rhetoric, we'll cover the process of formation, taking the first two steps into the real world to imply the art of wisdom. Rhetoric in classic terms is the selection of options from the first two steps, learning how to choose the right action. Additionally, rhetoric is the art of persuasion, to select from and deliver an argument to its best effect. We'll look also at the many methods and forms that can help to structure good arguments. Finally, the trappings of rhetorical appeals and the many ways they are misused to manipulate others. We'll take a brief look at some of that stuff. This course isn't going to be a super, super in-depth course. It's just something that I wanted to throw together to be really brief and introductory and introduce some of the words so that way you can go through and look at the words, look at the concepts, and then go out and do further research. Like I mentioned, I'm going to put the resources that I've used in building this course towards the end. And that's all I have for this at the moment. So that's going to be the outline for the course. And stick around. We'll have more of that on the way.